Welcome to the seminar series on sewer and pipeline engineering. My name is Bert Bossela. I'm the scientific director of the IKT, Institute for Underground Infrastructure. In this session, we will be looking at open cut construction and special soil and components. And this time it's about reinforced concrete pipes. The load bearing and cracking behavior of reinforced concrete pipes is determined by several essential factors. First of all, and that is important for every underground pipe, there are the support and bedding conditions. And then of course the pipe geometry, that is the diameter and the wall thickness of the pipe. But there is also another factor and that is the degree of reinforcement, that means the quantity and the position of the steel used to reinforce the pipe. Large pipes are mostly reinforced in order to reduce the wall thickness. In open trench construction, the steel reinforcement in the circumferential direction is particularly important. The longitudinal bars only serve as structural reinforcement, that is, as an aid for the production of the reinforcement cages. Usually, two reinforcement cages are produced an inner cage and an outer cage. The inner reinforcement should be able to absorb the tensile stresses on the inside of the pipe. The outer reinforcement should take the tensile stresses on the outside. We already know from the statics that the tensile stresses on the inside of the pipe occur on the pipe crown and in the pipe bottom. And the tensile stresses on the outside occur in the so-called spring line, that is where the horizontal extremes to the right and left are. Since both reinforcement cages run over the entire circum circumference anyway, it does not matter how the pipes are positioned later on the trench. The inner reinforcement can always bear the internal tensile stresses and the outer reinforcement the external tensile stresses. But what has to happen to the reinforcement to really take over the stresses from the concrete? When does the steel really bear all bending tensile stresses? Well, of course, it only does so when the pipe cracks. Or to put it in another, in another way, only a cracked concrete pipe acts as a reinforced concrete pipe. An uncracked pipe still bears the load as a pure concrete pipe. A further important quality characteristic is the concrete cover. The steel must be protected against external influences. In sewer pipes, therefore, a concrete cover of at least 4 cm is usually required so that in the cracked state of the concrete, the steel is still protected against aggressive media such as sewage. In the pictures, we see examples of very different depth of cover of the longitudinal and circumferential reinforcement. Here we see some pictures from the pipe production. The reinforcement cages are usually welded by machine as so-called spiral reinforcement. That means the reinforcement cage is created by wrapping a bar around the longitudinal bars in the circumferential direction. For most large pipes, both an inner and outer reinforcement cage are produced. The reinforcement cages are then placed in a formwork and the concrete is poured in. Very often the pipes are immediately, that means after a few minutes, removed from the formwork. Then the new pipes are only held together by the so-called green strength. Such a procedure is very common in concrete pipes, pipe production. But in the case of reinforced concrete pipes, this can lead to a considerable weakening of the bond between steel and concrete. Because there is a slight sagging of the fresh concrete when the formwork is removed. And that can create so-called reinforcement shadows. These are small cavities under the reinforcement in which there is no longer a sufficient bond between steel and concrete. Reinforced concrete pipes are therefore often hardened in the formwork, so they are only removed from the formwork about 24 hours after production. Important is also the curing of the concrete. That is for example supported by hooding the pipe, as you can see on one of the pictures. The water and the concrete must set with the binder and must not escape before. 
Here we see different pipe surfaces. On the left for a pipe that was immediately demolded and on the right for a pipe that was able to cure 24 hours in the formwork. We see already the surface properties prove the difference in the production process. And the production process is really decisive in improving the bonding behavior between steel and concrete. We see here, for example, a standard test on reinforced concrete pipes. In the so-called crown pressure test, the cracks appear in the crown, invert and the spring line of the pipe, just as they do during on-site installation. Depending on the manufacturing process, we, we then see large differences in the crack width and crack distribu distribution. Here, for example, we see on the left a component that was immediately demolded and on the right a component that was cured in the formwork. In the first case, there are a few but large cracks. In the second case, there are many but much smaller cracks. And all this with the same concrete and the same, st same steel reinforcement. Obviously, the hardening in the, in the formwork leads to a real improvement in the bond, because the crack widths are significantly smaller. So we have seen the production process for concrete pipes cannot necessarily be transferred one-to-one -to, -one to reinforced concrete pipes. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this also applies to the testing of pipes. Here we see the crown pressure test, as it has been used for concrete pipes for over a century. It serves to determine the maximum load at which the concrete pipe collapses. Of course, for pure concrete, the collapse already starts when the crack load is reached. However, this is not the case with a large reinforced concrete pipe. As we already know, a reinforced concrete pipe only acts as a reinforced concrete pipe when the concrete has already cracked. So cracking is not a failure, but a normal condition for this material. So in the test we do not so much have to look at the beginning of the crack as at the development of the crack width under increasing load. But there is another problem with the classic test. The crown pressure test produces the highest tensile stress and so the decisive first crack in the crown of the pipe. And that is where we have a pure bending moment. And as we know, pure bending moments lead to very large cracks. In reality, however, the pipes lie in the ground. The lateral earth pressure would not only cause pure bending stresses in the crown and invert, but also normal compressive stress. And this leads to significantly smaller cracks for the same stress level. The classic crown pressure test is therefore unsuitable for determining the crack behavior of a reinforced concrete pipe. Of course, we as IKT have further investigated this topic together with network operators and other experts. Here we see our research task. In reality, a superposition of bending and normal stresses is created at the decisive cross-section in the invert of the pipe. And in the test, this stress distribution must be generated so that the test results are close to reality. So how can this be achieved? Normally, the test looks like this. Pure bending in the crown area, which is the relevant cross-section in this test. If in a modified test we now push the pipe from the side, then we can set a stress distribution in the crown that corresponds exactly to the stress in the invert of a buried pipe. And of course, it doesn't matter that we use the crown area as the test cross-section, although in reality the invert is the first to fail, because after all, the pipes are rotationally symmetrically and they are produced with a spiral reinforcement. So it does not matter at all whether the crown or the invert is used for the analysis. Here we see the finished test stand. The pipe is pressed vertically and horizontally. The load ratio between the two presses must be adjusted in such a way that a realistic stress situation is created in the test. Here you can see the crack pattern in the crown during the new test. The crack width are then exactly the same as they would actually be in a load case outside in a buried sewer system. So in the end, we can now test the quality 
of reinforced concrete pipes for practical applications under defined laboratory conditions. Here we see a comparison of the test results from a classical ground pressure test with the test results from the new biaxial pressure test. The red line shows the crack width in the classic test and the yellow line shows the crack width of the same pipe in the new test. The pipe was rotated between the tests so that the crack width could be determined twice independently. We can see that for the same theoretical edge fiber stress of about 4 MPa, the crack width differ by a factor of 2. Since a typical limit value for the crack width in reinforced concrete is 0.2 mm, the classical test under this load would have already indicated a pipe failure, although under practical conditions there, are, there would have been no problem at all. So we can see, reinforced concrete pipes are special pipes and we need to know a lot about the material in order to be able to correctly assess the load bearing and cracking behavior. With regard to quality assurance, I would like to summarize the following points. Cracks are not a fundamental problem in reinforced concrete pipes. It is only when reinforced concrete cracks that it actually bears the load, load as reinforced concrete. In order for the steel to be protected from aggressive media, it needs a minimum covering of concrete. This applies in particular to sewer pipes. Unlike concrete pipes, reinforced concrete pipes should be hardened in the formwork. Over about 24 hours, immediate demolding, as with concrete pipes, leads to reinforcement shadows and poor bonding between steel and concrete. A good bond is necessary to prevent cracks from becoming too large. If cracks occur with good bond, they will be small, even if there are many cracks under high loads. In the case of poor bonding, however, there'll be large cracks as soon as the concrete starts cracking. However, usually it'll be only isolated cracks. The bond is then too weak to transfer the stresses from the steel back to the concrete in a short distance. Correspondingly, there'll be usually a very large distance between the cracks. Finally, the special feature of reinforced concrete should also be taken into account in quality assurance. In the crown pressure test, the actual stress pattern should be simulated with biaxial loading. Then, the actual crack width can be observed in the laboratory tests, as they will otherwise only occur later in situ under maximum loads. Thank you.